Hi everyone, this is the second half of projects completed in the fall 2022 uh, in the two-dimensional design class. Um, so it's a visual checklist to uh, let you know sort of what the projects are, what's expected, how it goes, etc. So, um, okay, here we are uh, picking up at project 10 from the last video. and. Um, looking for six variations or so as usual um, and take your quarter circle and here's a uh, minus 90 um, etc etc we're making a four-way uh, um, unit that gets repeated three times so we have a six by six grid here and we talked about that one Okay, so these are some possible variations. It's important not to have any spaces. This one is a little bit off because of the way this is hanging out here, which was um, what we don't want. We, and then be careful with any kind of little gap because when it goes to time to color, um, the color will flow through the gaps and you'll have a hard time. So, okay. so. Uh, we began the uh, formal coloring process. This is just a quick checkerboard. Um, and what we covered was um, a monochromatic um, color gradient, a value scale from dark to light. Um, and so this would be a study of, of blues that have a dark value to a, a pale or a light value. Um, we also worked with complementary color and analogous color. Uh, we talked about how to emboss the color uh, for a pretty cool effect. And this was taking that unit and uh, mirroring it right, uh, with embossed color. So um, we're being more intentional and focused with the color. This would be from the analogous color. Uh, group and here's a monochromatic study um, and this one has embossed color there this is interesting um, where the student uh, doubled it and did a layer blend uh, creating a lot of depth and texture here that's quite beautiful. As always, we're looking for creative variations. It's not enough just to copy what I do and then leave it at that. Um, I want to see that you uh, take it you know, in your own direction, uh, that you're exploring this in a way that makes sense. Um, this is a nice uh, gradient again. And then it's ganged up, uh, well, first embossed, and then doing a mirror imaging with four units of the same unit. And uh, again, um, this is all Project 12, and you can see all the variations. Once you get going, it's hard to stop. Um, okay, good. Project 13, um, what we did was we took the type mask tool and stroked the outside of the piece of type, first making it very large and then cropping it down very similar to what we did previously with this project here. Okay, so it's, a, it's another variation on that theme. Oops. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, did some mirror imaging of the unit, rotational. Um, this one would be um, taking that last unit and rotating it 90 and doing a different layer blend and other variations here. 
some more successful than others. And then leaving room to do some coloring again. And here the student um, did radial rotations again by copying the whole um, canvas, rotating at 90, doing a layer blend, flattening it, rotating, copying it again, rotating at 45, etc. And then keep going in an iterative process. So uh, that was project 13. Project 14 was the beginnings of uh, how do we define uh, spatial depth on a two-dimensional plane using light and shadow. And so uh, they first led you through this project on creating this sphere uh, with a light source. And then the second part of the project was defining spatial depth through proximity. In other words, the closer the object is to you, the bigger it appears. And then taking these units and uh, playing with them. Creating sort of, again, your own designs, but being true to the idea of where is light coming from and how is light described and how is space described. Project 14. In 15, uh, we took three planes and uh, transformed them using the free transform tool and ascribed uh, three values, um, added a light, and then because it's ultimately a hexagon, uh, we knew that they would uh, tile up very nicely and then played with variations for project 15. Okay. 16, we, um, we're back to writing an action script. We talked about the idea of spirals in nature. Uh, and how they exist everywhere, and the nature of growth and rotation uh, to create a spiral. And so we took a variety of shapes and spiralized them. Um, this is project 16. Here, um, this was mirror imaged or flipped over horizontally and then combined in a layer blend, same as the last one. Um, in this one, we used the pen tool to create a single curve and then applied the same action script to create a series of more fluid shapes. Triangle. Okay. Um, This was a reference back to the project with the letter S, <clears throat> um, revisiting rotational symmetries um, in 60 degree increments using um, birds. <laughs> okay. So that's all project 16. 17 um, uses the brush symmetry tool in Photoshop to explore traditional mandalas. <clears throat> so we set up the symmetry for 10-way symmetry and then chose an appropriate brush and did color overlays. Uh, these go quickly, so doing variations is 
simple and fun. Oops, sorry about that. So that's project 17. Um, in 18, I showed students how to lay out uh, letter forms on a uh, path, in this case a perfect circle, um, and then we um, copied and, and transformed it first making it smaller in a series of concentric circles and then offsetting them as you can see in the video um, playing with them in various ways also we did a took a poem um, and laid out type on some curves that we created with a pen tool Okay. That's project 18. 19, we got into um, Celtic knot work, starting with three circles and knotted them up. And then I did some color variations and also some complexity variations. Um, so we took that unit of three and combine it with two other units of three interlocking those and then taking that unit and interlocking with three more units um, and we should see a perfect weaving over under over under with each intersection um, all right and doing some color beveled color here on that first one. We took a look at um, Celtic knot work. Uh, in ancient times we looked at the Book of Kells in class as well. Um, and the next day, this is still Project 19, we um, created this triform, this tri uh, triangular uh, set of knot work bound by a circle and also a square with all the intersections perfectly woven over under so that was 20 on that one uh, 19 is the simple circles and 20 we broke up the, um, the circle uh, either rotating at 120 or 180 is that right okay uh, the painting machine is project 21 and we wrote a more extended action script to deconstruct a photograph and rebuild it uh, using a variety of filters um, and uh, once it's written it's easy to take a new photograph and um, just hitting one button create very large these are 24 by 24 inch uh, paintings if you will um, 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 right. So, so write two or three of these different scripts. I show you how to do that in the video, and um, these would make lovely large prints uh, done with pigmented inks, um, large canvases. So that's project twenty-one. Okay, so now we leave Photoshop and turn to fractals and the study of fractals using a program called Ultra Fractal. And the first day we explored the basic Mandelbrot fractal and learned how to uh, work with the color palette to change the colors, how to do deep zooms on the fractals, how to add interest through uh, adding different layers and blending those layers together. Okay, 
So that's project 22. Uh, we spent two days on that. We had a quick side trip to designing a Christmas card for the president's Christmas card. Uh, so this is not an official project. <laughs> uh, very good. Uh, the next project, we'll call it 23, um, was Apophysis, another program that we downloaded and played with. And these are called flame fractals. They're beautifully atmospheric explorations um, and we again worked with um, color schemes uh, the gradient palette um, ways of, of distorting and reconfiguring these um, this is a case of bringing I think into Photoshop and doing a mirror image this was lovely and Again, uh, in the video I talk about how to do variations and work with, with the program. So that, we'll call that 23. You can see all the variations here. Um, and uh, sort of wrapping up the course now, we uh, turn to tessellations again of Escher and how to um, uh, tile a plane with uh, deformed edges. And um, again, I take you through that in the video, some color games. Um, and 24, five, sorry, um, doing the same deformation, but on a hex. We built a hexagon and created six triangles in it and then deformed one, uh, two sides and then uh, ganged them up and then playing coloring games as well. Oops, come on, load. Um, you can feature the actual hexagon, or we can erase that, um, and both are possible. And um, so, it's finally, um, as the last project, number twenty-five, we um, explored. Uh, AI uh, image making using DALI, which is a very hot topic right now. Um, scanning the internet for millions, even billions of images. You um, have a text input to create a brand new image that doesn't exist anywhere else. Um, and uh, depending on what you type in for text, DALI then spits back a amazing and fantastical image depending on what your um, input is. So um, this is opening the door for, uh, for artists, a very important creative tool. Um, it could be a, uh, help spur idea ideas um, on image making. Um, <clears throat> you can see uh, the student input dolphin swimming in a galaxy and this is what Dolly came back with. A lion in the ocean. <laughs> um, tiger underwater in the clear blue ocean. Uh, these are her inputs here. And it takes just a couple of minutes. Astronaut in a jungle. Um, <laughs> you can delineate what style you want it. Panda mad scientist mixing sparkling chemicals.
a bright city in the future with flying cars. Um, a bowl of soup that's also a portable, a portal to another dimension. And what a lovely illustration. So have fun with that one. And that pretty much takes us to the end. So um, email me with any questions. Uh, refer back to the videos. Um, make sure your uh, projects are all complete. And take care.